Hello everybody, welcome to the official cast of the round three group K game between Serafino and his Wood Elves and Petey Poos and his undead, Serafino's Wumatos, chosen to receive. A couple of beautiful kits on this team, but first let's have a look at the group. You can see here that Serafino's, well, first of all, Rock's on four, who's playing Aresius on two. Serafino's on two and Petey Poos is on one. So if Petey Poos wins this and scores some touchdowns, he's got half a chance. Um, if Serafino wins, he's definitely qualified. If it's a draw, then Petey Poos definitely doesn't qualify and Serafino might qualify. So it's all dependent on the other results and stuff. Uh, apart from if Serafino wins, he definitely goes through. And uh, well, it looks like he's already nearly finished setting up. Um, and you can see, look, they look great. Look at these guys. They, I really like this. I mean, they're also red and white, which is what my team is, I've just realized. But I like this purple as well. Yep, lovely stuff. Cheerleaders, orc cheerleaders for PD Poos. And, uh, well, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, yeah, the Woodies do have to, do have to win. Um, but I guess the thing about the thing is, the undead have to win as well, right? The thing is, the woodies don't have to win. The woodies don't have to win. The woodies could draw and still qualify, whereas the woodies know that the undead have to win. So the woodies can just score on turn eight, and that means that Pete, the the undead Peter Poos will have to score early and just lose because they're because these wood elves, so he'll win, right? If your opponent scores before turn eight, as Woody's, you, you score back. So I guess that's what he's thinking, the fact that his opponent has to win, he'll receive. Um, and looking at Serafino's team, he's got a sprint catcher rather than a sidestepper. Not a great fan of that. Yep, failure at Daka. But he's got a tree which can hurt things, can't he? This is a grab tree. Oh yeah. Oh this is the this is the all in on the low on the one turner kind of team, right? Sprint, frenzy and grab. So lots of one turning facilitation. Strip ball obviously, leader as most of them do. Uh, with an apple. And Petey Poos has got a pretty standard um, you know, four skills on the ghouls, a couple of guard team and the instant route from the tree is pretty handy for the undead but two wrestles is funny isn't it so a pretty tragic LOS for Serafino he didn't turn over but he got two two nothings and a push for a route hmm sad Yeah, let me, let me go at the groups. Yeah, so he's up to... But so yeah, there's a chance Serafino qualifies with a draw. So I guess... I guess he thinks... Because he knows that PD Poos has to win, he can receive, score on turn 8, and then PD Poos basically has to lose on purpose, right? Because if you have to win, that means you have to score early. And if you score early versus Woodies, you probably just lose. So... And if you kick versus the undead, they could just cause three cars on turn one and then, you know, your or removals on turn one and then you're in a lot of trouble with the whole game, so. I do like the pink dice. I really do like the pink and black dice. There's a few dice I like in this. Yeah. I used the pink and black dice for a long time until I discovered the Dave dice. Putting him in at two is good. Oh, okay. No, I like I like putting him in at two. I right? put him in there. So then, if one of them like fails to dodge away, you get to punch the other one. Right? Whereas now, he dodges away, and then if he fails to dodge away, this guy doesn't get hit by money. 
So I get, you know, he's further out and he covers a bit more space, or if I would add one of them both. For more chance of a mighty blow bat. Yeah, we, we've just got a DACA here with extra steps, right? Like, it's a DACA that gets everybody based and punched. Which isn't... Isn't great, in my opinion. He's blitzable by the mummy if, uh, if he doesn't dodge. Oh, he's getting a surf for. He is getting a surf. Ghoul. That is a tragic mistake by Petey Poos. A mistake, of course, that I would never ever make against Wood Elves with a frenzy dancer. <laughs> Never in my life would something like that happen. Ever. <laughs> oh, Tom. Oh, dear. No, oh, what a disastrous start. What a disastrous start for Petey Poos. To be fair, I might have been a little more, a little more focused in the World Cup than in the game that I did it in versus Misspelled Tree, but, you know, it is possible to make mistakes still, isn't it? People can make mistakes. Hello, Torek. Oh, he rolls an instant one. Fails, stunned. Mm. I mean, I don't think there's any much to this, right? It's just blitz and base everything you can and hope for the best. It's how I play it. I don't think there's anything cleverer than that. <laughs> To be honest, let's base hope. Try not to get your players served. He could have maybe three diced the dancer, right? Three dicing a dancer and casting him is pretty is pretty strong. with the mummy 3D the dancer. This is okay though because you get to power this guy in base to to uh okay well I mean he should have based I think he gets a Kaz I guess no 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 he had a square so there's no there was no point in following right it was definitely wrong to follow because even if you want to go in that square you can just move into it after so there's no need to follow ever. But I think he yeah, absolutely should have gone into this guy, right? Like you have to, you have to pressure the non the non dodge guys. No way, you haven't just done that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Who can say if it's good or bad? I definitely wouldn't give away two surfs in two turns. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah, I mean, the, the guard was getting served. I mean, the guard might still get served. You can still just surf the guard. Oh, 
I really hate that this guy is, is sprinting that sidestep though. Looks like he's not surfing anyone? Wait, no, no, he, this guy can go to here, right? And then it's 2-2, two, two, and then he surfs. No, he's gone for the, he's gone for the goo. I guess the ghoul's easier, right, because it's just two hits. The ghoul's easier because it's just two pushes. I hate one dice. I hate one dice. Hate one dice again. But I guess now he can come back and 2D this guy. But, um... Yeah. I would have, I would have either, so, the thing about, the surfing the guard takes, takes like two pushes and then a, then you can pow. So it was, it was, it was easier to surf the uh, ghoul. But yeah, I would have definitely just punched the guard at first and then made it two and a two. Yeah. Oh. So the, the tree dubs skull, which means it's unrooted, which is a good thing for the tree. And somehow Peaky Poo's avoided a second surf in two turns. Wouldn't happen to me, obviously. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. I like these, I like these wood elves. Zoom out as far out as we can. I mean, they're really stretching the pitch, aren't they? Being down here and up there, it's... Awkward play from the wood elves. Can't they just be like orcs and everything be in this, <laughs> this area? <laughs> Cool surfable. This looks like he's just going to two dice. It, it wasn't even the dancer! Okay, he didn't kill him. Didn't follow. <laughs> the funny thing is, by not following, he gets his ghoul surfed. Whereas if he'd followed, it, it wouldn't have been surfed. But I guess he was scared of going near the sidelines. Whereas now, I mean, you have to surf this ghoul. There's no, uh, no doubt. In case you don't know, move this guy out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then he pushes him away. So, I just literally have to. It's the law. You have to. Oh, this is a spicy position. Why is he so far away? Are you lost? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> maybe, Jeff, maybe. <laughs> no one's got more experience than me at being served for 90 minutes <laughs> by a frenzy dancer. Okay, I mean, this is... This is something. <laughs> Flip me. Oh, he cut the corner. That's bad, bad play, right? That's bad play. I'm sorry, but that's bad play. Cutting the corner there. Move this guy first, so he's not in your way. And then you just have to dodge once. That added a 3% chance for your dancer to die. And not get the serve. And to lose the game. Right? And yes, okay, now he's got an extra square of movement. But so what? You know? Like, so what? An extra square of movement is not worth a 3% chance for your dancer to fall over. It just isn't. I <laughs> rush to do something there and again. The second one doesn't do anything, it's still just a gate dodge, as it were. Counting is for me, it's your right. I just roll all the dice here to fix everything. Yeah. I just think it's, uh, they just don't get punished by it, so they just keep doing it, do they? You know, carelessness, laziness, whatever you want to call it. Um, uncompetitiveness. <laughs> I just think they just roll some dice and just don't care that much. But yeah, still got to cry when you snake a dodge because it's so unlucky, isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times you shouldn't make it. When it happens, you're unlucky. I mean, you can't really go for the dodge one day, even though, you know, he obviously didn't want to leave it on because he double rushed. It's just not very good, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven square hitting him. Unless, like, you don't follow. And, in fact, you know, there's no way in score, even if you, because if you don't follow and you power him, you can't catch the scatter. There's absolutely no way you can score with him this turn if you blitz him. So what's the point? He'll just, he'll just knock you over and, uh Pick it back up. <laughs> I mean, maybe not. I guess maybe, right? You can put the mummy in the front and you can power him to there. And then he, this other goon could have got it. But realistically. this a rush? You almost have to. You're obligated to, even though it's not really very good. Because they're both dodging away on the 136, but still, that's a 3% chance, isn't it? And, you know, if they keep making them, they might fail one. Well. No, it's hard, and it? it's really hard when these against Wood Hills because they just run away from you. That is the problem. As strong as Undead are versus the field, they feel pretty inept versus Woodies because Woodies are just so fast. They just run away from you.
This is actually great. You know, I said it was like a Daka when he gets punched. It's actually fantastic that he's got these, what, three players distracting four. And that means he gets to outnumber down here. Or at least have parity because he's down a player. And he's got loads of space down here, hasn't he? So maybe this is a good idea. Send up three or four and then you get to like massacre them if it's seven versus seven, right? What chance does anything have versus Woody's if Woody's can just roll a million twos? Hate the uh, one two like that. I should have gone one two, right? Then he'd have been here, and that's uh, if he'd failed the first one, he'd be at least be off the sideline. Hello, Demento. This turn should be good for the Woodies, yeah. Um, I mean, things could be happening, Demento. So I'll just tell you. Um, that I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to show you. Rocks on four, Serafino and Aresius on two, Petey Poo's on one. So a win and in for Serafino. Um, Petey Poo's needs a win and some help. A draw looks rough. Tell you what, this team isn't as good as K Fox, is it? K Fox got like nine dodge on the team. And all these guys have just got not dodge. <laughs> Three players on the field. Four players. And then one Kaz would all have dodge. Big Kev's team. Does nothing. Re rolls it because he's got four. Does nothing. Yes, Peter Poos needs a win and the Orcs to win. Yes, exactly. Whereas Serafino just gets a win and he's definitely in whatever happens. A win, a draw is probably disastrous for both. But even, even then a draw might be good enough for Serafino, right? A draw is good enough for Serafino if the Orcs win. So... Yeah. Well, rolling twos is pretty good. Now he's connected the team. Reconnected the team and uh, looks very bad for Pity Poos. Yeah, it is mummy. <laughs> Aggressive mummy. No, there was no, there was no Daka. It was, uh, he started off normally and then ran away with like four players while the rest of the team just tried to surf ghouls. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a half Daka almost, I guess. The tree dubbed school to knock itself over after rooting. Deck away you take hits but get to surf ghouls. So, you know, that's pretty good, isn't it? These mummies are like energetic, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I don't think his ghoul would have regened if it had died. I don't think so.
It sucks because you want to like blitz and put players on him, but then he'll just come and serve you yet again. <laughs> <laughs> they have, yeah, for Fabrio, they really have. If he doesn't, if he doesn't fully cage this dancer. I might cry. Okay, well that, that does something. Okay. This does at least is not an instant surfed ghoul. I mean, it could still definitely be a surfed ghoul, couldn't it? But at least it's not an instant surfed ghoul. It's turn six as well, so the woodies can just walk away, can't they? Two plus, to just get up there. Imagine if he stood up and he could have been part of the cage. Does need jump up, yeah. A wild Olivier de Lac build. Oh, does not and re rolls it. That's a spicy re roll, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, it's weird. The, the 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 jump up is weird. I like his double sidestep catches to completely invalidate one turns. Is pretty smart. Twos, it's pretty good. And now the undead coach is finding out why having your players behind the ball is very, 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 very bad. He's got nothing. He's got nothing left. I don't think there's any clever players he can do here. Just surf a catcher. Like, just give up on the score and surf a catcher. You might as well give up on the score at this point, honestly. At least it stops you getting anyone else surfed. I'd definitely do this 2D, right? And see if you power it even. I wouldn't hate just going for the surf. It's sad as it is. Like, how hard is this? I mean, you could dodge in, right? Six plus with a reroll. Dodge in one D. Yeah, okay. Dodge in one D. Okay, it's it's a dodge in one D. That's what you have to do, I guess, right? If you're PD poos, you have to win this game. There is only one way you possibly win this game, and that is your wrestle girl. It's about to dodge into this cage and surf the ball. Simple as that. Only chance you have. 30% dodging, it's not even that bad. 
Like it's way better than doing anything else, isn't it? Way better. Like this is not gonna work. By the way, he rolled a power, which was a six. <laughs> Just quietly. the only play right you just have to go in you have to go in for the surf there it's it's actually it's like the funny thing is it's probably the just the the, the best play anyway right it's probably just the absolutely objective best play that there is and then especially in the con in like the context of you have to win this game then it's even more so, right? Because you can understand people being timid and think, oh, I'll run some players back and hopefully do something. But, like, with this game, like, with you have to win, it just takes away all choice from it being a play. Like, you, you, you don't need to think about it now at all, do you? You just, you have to go for it. I mean, and, but you probably always should anyway, right? You probably all should just automatically just go, right? This is a 38%. This is better than I'm going to ever get playing properly. <laughs> like, sideline cages are bad. <laughs> They're bad for a reason because people get a, a near 30% to put you in the crowd. No matter what they are. <laughs> no matter what they are, they get near to a 30% to put you in the crowd. And yeah, you had to go for that. He had to. Having said that, he's thinking a lot. Maybe he's just thinking about what to do with these two. Blitzing him, I quite liked uh, blitzing the guard, right? Dodge, blitz him, then that gets him out without having to dodge. Yeah, exactly, Magic, exactly. That's what I mean, like, it's probably just automatically the best thing anyway. But when you have to win, it, it just makes it nonsense to consider anything else. Now he's got a 6 plus in with a mummy. It's just for a 2D that, that isn't even a surf and isn't a, you know, isn't a crowd throw in. So now he has to roll a 6 for a 2D. He's got a six, he's got two, two, six, then a 2D, then he's got a power, then he's got to get a 3 and 8 scatter into the crown. Or he just blitzes a dude and hopes for 1 in 36. No, Chun's, Chun's column is bad. Like, you know, sideline cage is the worst. <laughs> and one off the sideline is the second worst. Wow, Nose dive. What a blast from the past. Hello. The thing is, the 4 plus 1 day with Wrestle. Uh, it's five plus one D. Yeah, the, the five plus one D with wrestle. The problem is like getting the ball down isn't that good for you, right? What you want is the ball in the crowd. But I mean, trying to 5 plus is better than trying to 6 on 2D. Just. 
But then again, the 6 on 2D might kill the dancer, so... Okay, is he doing it? He is? Doesn't get it? Wee wall? I mean, he has to wee wall. Doesn't get it. If only that had been the one dice surf earlier, he rolled a six in. <laughs> he might not get served because he does have all these players to do things on the other hand he might get served Might get double served. <laughs> Surfing two ghouls and scoring seems pretty good, doesn't it? That does seem pretty good. Keep, yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. No dive. Yeah, if it worked. Yeah. yeah, it's annoying that you can. He's just got a one D. This, but it's a two plus, isn't it? And you've got a reroll. So, I think it's funny how how some people think nothing of cutting an unnecessary corner. Yeah. Oh, it's a one dice blitz. Just one dice, him, right? It's fine. Then you can serve three players in one turn. Which is pretty okay. I mean, it's a two plus, they're all the same, aren't they? I mean, I think corner cuts are probably, you know, objectively worse. They're just getting you an extra square, aren't they? Whereas a 1D is like saving you resources and stuff. I mean, if he wants to do it safely, he can do it safely easily. So, he might just do it safely, but... We'll see what he does. I'm just going to start with that 2 plus. He's going to serve his own lineman. I hate this. I hate whatever this turn is. 
Oh my god. So, I can say now. Blitz him. Push him to there. Then come round to here. This guy comes round to here. He serves him. Now the dancer's got two assists and serves this guy. So you could just serve three players and score. Pretty easily. Pretty easy to serve two or three players and score. Oh my god, you just power him in straight away, you've got the other serve. Wow. But he scored. If you're gonna do a dodge there, you're just better off doing the 1D, right? Is the thing. Yes, exactly, yeah, and he could have also just been safer, yeah. Yeah. He could have also just just played it a lot safer. He could have played it maximum safety and just blocked people away and stuff and uh and made it safe here. Yeah. But I'd rather surf three players <laughs> than score safely. <laughs> but no, yeah, maybe, honestly, maybe he should have just served. Maybe he should have just played it safe. Maybe he should have just played it safe and not surfed at all. It's easy to sit here watching and say, ah, I'd have served three players. But maybe, maybe, would, maybe I wouldn't have. Maybe I'd have just done a two dice block and a two dice block and a two dice block and scored without surfing. Can still surf the uh, could have still surf the ghoul at the end. I think could have surfed one ghoul uh, safely. I think <laughs> start for the two plus then not surf anyone. Yeah, that is, that is what happened. So this is pity poo's pretty. PT Poos is pretty much eliminated. Going down 1 0. He's now got to score two touchdowns in the second half to have any chance. He already has had three or four surfing chances this game. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like, it, it, you know, to be fair, it is stressful. And as I said, like, it's totally different when you're watching it impassively and just thinking, oh, this would be good compared to being in the heat of the moment, so... I like tunnel vision and stuff. Oh! I, did I did I do where they were from and stuff? I don't think I did. Petey Poos, yeah, THBBL. Season 1, UK Great Britain. Serafinos, Italy, Wild Thing Studio, Wild Cup. There you go. I think I did miss those at the start. And the THBB is Tiki Hut. Mm. But he wants to he wants to kill the he wants to kill the tree, doesn't he? Foul it with all these extra players he's got. This is fine because the tree is annoying for rubbish bash teams. <laughs> and he gets the cars. Head injury. Don't really want to lap all that, do you? Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the Blood Bowl 3 Discord. <laughs> Serial killer. <laughs> Enjoy your head injury. That's just a joke. I shouldn't I shouldn't make any more jokes. Wow, it the app it and it worked. 37.5%. So good apple, thirty-seven and a half percent gets it. And uh, oh yeah, his coach is Griff. Nice. Default cheerleaders is disappointing. And over here we have the orcs. <laughs> so nine players. 
for the elves. Still 11 for the undead. Well, still 13 for the undead. They've got half a chance. Like, half a chance. I mean, that's maybe being generous. They've got to score as quick as possible and then turn over wood elves to win 2-1. <laughs> It's really hard. It's really cool that Lepeg and Yatsuko are having their playoff game on Friday. I don't know if that's allowed or not, but you know, let's let's say it is. Oh, instant injury. <laughs> he might not, he might cover it with the uh, zombie night. Oh, I mean, he also might not. But he might. God, he's leaving the ball on the... Worse than leaving immediate surf on, he's leaving the ball on the ground versus elves. But also, yes, it looks like an immediate surf. <laughs> Pooza's finest hour. It's fair to say. Some pretty sweet ball coverage. Yeah, he had to rush to pick up the ball and should have done, but didn't. <laughs> so instead, 
the wood elves are going to pick it up <laughs> and instantly win the game. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. It's funny in it this strip I really don't like this sprint guy. If if he was sidestep, it's just like so much better, right? Because you've got a you've got a frenzy guy, so now you can use the sidestep dude to, to set things up. And you know, it helps the one turn. Arguably more than um Sprint if you're using frenzy and stuff and tricks to do things. <laughs> the worst thing, the worst thing about this just instantly giving serves away versus what else with a war dancer. <laughs> the frenzy dancer is. I can totally relate. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be able to, but I can. <laughs> no, that's ridiculously greedy. Ridiculously greedy. How did you not make that two dice? Hello, Jay Leave. Thank you for it, Doris. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? It sure looks like it. Oh. See, look, if this if this had been sidestep, it would have been here, and he could just hand off to it. And then this guy would have been here as well, obviously, and then do the 2D. Oh my god, he's just using all his rerolls. I had a plan, and I'm gonna do it! <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he got the ball on the catch it. <laughs> oh dear. I still can't understand how that happened. I swear it was like an out-of-body experience. It was so weird. I mean, it's just a dodge, right, and then see what happens. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't good. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven fitting in. Pow! And see what happens. You probably won't do it with block, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But then it's a rush, but it's better to do it with block. Oh, power dancer. Do absolutely nothing to him. Classic. Yeah, Jerry. Yeah, hopefully that will. I mean, hopefully it'll be multicast. I mean, this is this is my dream. The multicasting is my dream. Um, we'll see how it works because you know I'm going to need help from people, and it might be rubbish. In my head, it'll be great, but. Um, It might be a bit harder in real life, we'll see. Yeah, he needs a win, yeah, so I mean basically out, right? He's basically out now. Because um, he's one nil down, he's got to score two touchdowns. And it's he's not technically out yet. He's not... He's not... <laughs> he's not out yet, but... Um, yeah, I mean, he's as close to being out as you can be without being out <laughs> right now. I 
I mean, the elves snake this dodge. And he's got half a chance, hasn't he? He did not snake. But if they had, I mean, he was just falling over right there. And he could have picked it up and scored. Leaves, leaves the gate dodge on, right? He could, he could have just been there, and it's like way better. Or like there, in fact, couldn't he have been? It's just way better. But instead he was there for the gate dodge, but then gets the extra one to fix it. And now it's, uh, yeah. It's as close to being over as you can get without it actually being over. You'd think it would it would do now, um, but it's amazing how people haven't gone for those things. Like, they generally don't go for it as much as they should in, like, normal play, right? And now it's kind of hyper got to go for it, right? Because you're playing people, you know, as good as you or better than you, right? Generally. And you in games you have to win. So like you know if you if you're playing in like ladder, it might be technically the best play, but well your opponent probably isn't very good and will make a mistake later, or your player might die going for it, and also you might not really care whether you win or not anyway. So like all those things on ladder are going against like doing the correct move, but in this all of those things are out of the window. So. It's really weird. It's really weird how people tend not, have just tended not to, you know, go for things as much as they should have done. Like, you know, when uh, C. Bros was playing Diamed in Super League. He had a chance to 5 plus in to 1D surf, so obviously he did it, because that's a great chance versus Diamond. Best chance you're probably going to get. But, you know, if you're playing on ladder, well, my player might die. Might get a chance next turn, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's like, you know, if, if you're not like a NAF player, like, you know, if, if if all they do is play ladder, maybe they, you know, or leagues, maybe they haven't got that in their arsenal to uh, switch it like that. But, I mean, they should, because you don't have to play like that to know it's the right play, do you? You know, like, like that 6 plus surf earlier in the first half, that was, it was all you were going to get. You just had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, I was actually. We went to Shrewsbury, but you see, to be fair, so well, I wasn't right. I in my uh, in the game versus Truk, where I dodged with a ball carrier, that was to get quite far ahead, right? And my alternative to dodging was to be out of range or give up a one D on the ball, and giving up a one D on the ball is way worse than uh, making a dodge with a ball carrier, right? So I made a dodge with a ball carrier. And then uh, in the other game versus the All World Alliance, I, um, I like the, the thing I did wrong there was switching my game plan halfway through. But I was gonna go for the 1D, but then when push came to shove, you know, I uh, chickened out a little bit. Um, but it was a considered chicken out, you know, like I thought, mm, well, you know, maybe I can, maybe if I don't roll the, you know, if, I, if I roll the if I roll the skull here and have to use my reroll, like I can't. If I use my reroll on the one D, then the running through looked really bad. So 
I really had to have made it 2D on purpose so I could have hit with a witch and then everything would have been good. But because I didn't think it through properly, I ended up kind of chickening out when I should have just still gone for the 1D. So. Yeah, grab. Very like one turn orientated, right? With the uh, frenzy, the sprint and the grab. I did have, like, to be fair, the first two games I didn't have to win. Well, the third game I did have to win. And, uh... Oh, wow, there's a Kaz. I actually could have put massive pressure on I didn't even realise at the time. And then, what, looking at the replay, I was like, oh, I could have actually put loads of pressure on here. And probably should have done. And, uh, I just didn't. But, I mean, it wasn't because I was scared of losing or whatever, right? And, uh... <laughs> have Woody's lost a game this tournament? They have. I can tell you. Shall I tell you some stats? I'll tell you some stats. Skaven are the best performing team, actually. With 11 wins and 4 losses. Wood Elves are second with 10-4-3. And Dark Elves are third with 9-4-3. And then after those is uh, Undead with 13, 7, 14. So Undead are very, uh, very middle of the pack. Tree did lose to all world lines with hoodies, yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm not really sure how, even though I have seen the replay of that game, I'm still not sure how. Going for the 1D. 1D here is, a, is actually really good, isn't it? It unlocks everything really well. It's a bit risky, right? Could have, could have 2D'd up here and stuff. And I just moved over there, one nil up. So probably just 2D'ing over here is better. But... This is uh, really good for coming down here. Turns out, I think this is probably just a better play to come through this guy anyway, right? Because, or this guy, one of these two was just better to come through anyway because uh, now even if you move the ball through there, there's a, there's a dude who wants to hit you. And I mean, Serafino needs to win, right? It's not as if he's just cruising and qualified. He has to win this game. Um, and Petey Poos, even though a draw does nothing for Petey Poos, might still want to get the draw, right? Like, you know, like he could still just hit you and knock you over and then maybe, you know, maybe make it 1 1. So maybe a bit careless, need, like, you know, needlessly careless here by uh, Serafino. I feel like he definitely, definitely should have probably blitzed this guy and uh, defenseless right yeah, Just blitz this guy and, and cage around the tree was the play. Million percent. Million percent was blitz this guy, cage, cage around the tree. But instead he saw, ooh, I've got a 1D one, one to unlock this. And like, it's kind of worked out, but it was a bunch of dice, wasn't it? And now he's out of rerolls. Can 2D the ball. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, rush, rush. I mean, too safe when it comes to uh, to going for ball sacks. Not too safe when it comes to exposing players to serfs. Absolutely fine with risk taking there. <laughs> it's okay, I can say it because I did it versus. <laughs> This is a frenzy dancer too. <laughs> oh dear.
Yeah, it's really weird. Like you, you see that all the time in like ladder and stuff. It's just blitz this guy and then tag this or blitz. Or like, you know, if you've, if you've got a Crocs that could five plus hit the ball, they'll they'll blitz the guy who's marking them and then go and stand on the ball with tail. And it's just it's just mathematically it's it's wrong, right? But people do it because well, it's safer and let the other guy roll the dice and failure state and all this kind of nonsense. Where at the end of the day. It just comes down to the stats. Well, he did the right thing here, and he's got a power. He could have maybe moved some players in to make like the catch for the elves harder on the scatter, but he hasn't, and he's got chances. So what you block this guy and then you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush, handoff, score. He's already not done that. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter which one you do. No, 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 no you've got another dodge. The tree is rooted, yeah. I'm pretty sure the play was this guy block, and then you went for, you go for the five. I mean, the five plus pick, five plus pickup is horrendous, but you know you've got to score this turn, so you've got a chance of winning. Oh, he ran out of time. He's got no time bank, and you ran out of time without standing up the ghoul, or moving this guy, or doing anything. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. No. I don't fancy it. <laughs> Turns to turn over and scover. <laughs> but, you know, that's what he's got. He's got two. Like, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to turn over and score on buddies. Like, they're, they're so good. They're so good. What can you what can you do against them? Yeah, so it's got roots. I know it's going to sound... I know I'm going to sound a dick by saying that. But you see these white roots that it's got? That's not part of the model, right? That's what it gets when it takes root. It gets these roots around it. Scatter. Yep. I don't know if there's a thing on the card that says rooted or anything. Uh, nothing indicates that it's taken root. Just the, uh, just, the just the roots. <laughs> It should have an icon, yeah. It should have something that you can see. I mean, well, it's got the roots, but yeah, it doesn't really seem enough, does it? I mean, you've got to be paying attention when it roots or notice the model. Yes, in can. Lincoln Park bomb. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not the Necrol yet, I'm dead. Oh, cows. Okay, so then he punches this one on three dice. And then he dodges one, two, three, four, five, six, hands off, scores. He's 
blitzed with the guy who had the skull. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush pass, skull. Inky, okay. So yeah, if only last turn he hadn't run out of time, you'd have had this guy seven squares away, right? This guy would have been stood up here. Would have been ideal, and he would just gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and off score. But he didn't run out of time. So yeah, the skelly. Oh yeah, yeah, hand off the skelly. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Rush hand off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I forgot how bad they are at passing. <laughs> so there we go. Skellington scores. Do it. Oh my god. <laughs> he had like eight seconds. I'm like, oh my god, he's just literally going to run out of time before he scores. Imagine that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the stress. Right. <laughs> Mini heart attack. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, right? Imagine what these guys feel like. That's the thing. Is that, oh my! I swear to God, my game was like the most stressful blood bowl game of my life by a mile. It was brutal. And now all these cars that seemed irrelevant, that were just like, oh, he cast him. Now it's like, well, okay, he's only got what six players. But he still only has two turns to get the ball off him and score. Two turns isn't very long. No riot or blitz. Or re-roll. Neither time won the brilliant. No re. No. Neither team won the brilliant coaching kickoff event. There you go. I'll learn to speak one day. Oh yeah, the Woodies need a win as well. Oh. <laughs> oh and he's got no re-rolls. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Zerafino. Oh dear. Yes, mummy's on the LOS, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow, wow. What a game. Yeah, yeah, um, because Rock is on four points, I think. Serafino's on two. Aresius is on two and Petey Poos is on one. So it's possible for Serafino to go through with a draw. It is possible. Because Rock could just, you know, win his third game. But it's out of his hands if he draws, whereas if he wins he's he's just through. Yes, yeah, Rock is absolutely hundred percent through if they draw, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just Aresius, right? Aresius is on two. So um at the moment <laughs> like Rock's kind of in danger, right? You can see there. He, Serafino and Aresius could both end up on five and he could not qualify. But if it's a draw, he he qualifies. So Oh god, we're in, we're in time bank. <laughs> it's gonna sideline cage it. Again. Will Petey Poos do the right thing this time? Is the question.
he doesn't fully sideline cage. But, I mean, he can still just fill the square himself to surf him. <laughs> Tree fails. Well, 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 well. I don't think Petey Poos has enough time to do this. <laughs> After last turn, when it was just literally make a block, pick it up, hand it off, and he had 15 seconds left. Um, I've got a feeling that he's going to time out on this one. <laughs> We'll see. THBBL is Tiki Hut Blood Bowl League. This movie's already in the wrong place, right? It should have been there. One, two, three, been there. Okay, he's got... He's got a player in the opposing half. Good. Good. It's the wrong player, but he's there. That's good. This one should have been the one that did it. Because this is your recovery when the ball goes in the scoring bit, when the ball goes into the crowd, right? Yeah, this guy had to run behind the carrier. This mummy had to go there. This guy runs behind the carrier, and then the blodger dodges in the serve. Okay, he gets the pow though. He gets the pow, to be fair. It could go in the crowd anyway. No, it doesn't. <laughs> don't follow. But if I don't follow, I'm going to not get served. <laughs> and he's on seven seconds, and he's got half of his team left to move. Clever Jim might have called it. his team left to move. One, two, three, four. Could have tagged that guy who doesn't have dodge. Could have moved this guy over in the scoring range as well. Right, that would have been real good, right, moving him next to him. I mean, the problem is, when you've got 20 seconds left, you only have time to move one, right? Like, he had to move quicker earlier. Because the timer goes for animations and stuff. So, it's like really, really, really difficult. Once, 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 like you start going slow, like you can't speed up and make up for the actions at the end. Like, you know, like how in Blood Bowl 2, you'd have like 10 seconds left and like make about eight moves or whatever. You just can't do that in Blood Bowl 3. You just absolutely can't. You've got to, you've got to start moving a lot earlier in Blood Bowl 2. That you just look physically can't move five guys in 20 seconds. You can move like one or two if you're lucky. Maybe it's three, right? <laughs> None of these guys would make Blitz Pit, that's true. Oh my god, Kaz. So here we go, the Dancer can just dodge out, pick it up, no re-rolls, and then dodge again, and he's pretty much good. Makes the pick up, gets three squares in, so he's not in Chun's column or on the sideline. And it's just going to be a 1D to try and power dancer with no recovery. And really, doing that doesn't do himself any good, does it? This is one of those things, isn't it? Should PD Poos do do this 1D? Like, you know. <laughs> Should he try to stop the score now? It's like... It's mean to Serafino if he tries to stop it. It's mean to Rock if he doesn't try to stop it. So it's six and two threes, isn't it? Whichever, whichever way you like. 
Nah, this guy's too far away. Because he didn't move him last turn. The trolley problem in Blood Bowl, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, either way feels scummy. This is the thing, you know, like, look, people said, you know, like, uh, you know, like, say, turn 16 fouling in, um, in Chalice and stuff, and it's like, well, or like, you know, just not playing the, like, not, not making the LOS blocks on turn 16, you know? Like, making the LOS blocks on turn 16 in Chalice, when it was, when it wasn't res. You know, okay, if, if you do that, it's unfair on that dude if you kill somebody. But by the same token, it's unfair on the next opponent if you don't do it and don't kill somebody. So it's just it's just six and two threes, isn't it? It's just personal preference. I don't think you can say one is right and one is wrong. Just whichever, whichever they want. It was a very entertaining game, yeah. Yeah, can't can't fault it for entertainment. That's for sure. I guess they were both pretty stressed out, right? They both had to win. As I say, it was the most stressful game of Bowl I've ever played. And like, you know, I played a lot of games of Bullet Bowl in a lot of tournaments, and uh, that was incomparable. Uh, okay. Right. There we go, anyway, a win for Serafino, a 2-1 win for Serafino. And then we can look at the table there. And you can see that now Serafino is top with five points. So Rock versus Aresius will be a thrilling orc mirror <laughs> in which a draw or a win will see Rock qualify and a win for Aresius will see him qualify. So Aresius will have to win that game. Roth will qualify with a draw. Uh, but at the moment, Serafino is top of the, top of the table and Petey Poos is, of course, eliminated. So commiseration, Petey Poos. Congratulations, Serafino. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.